You are tuned in to Kids in the Pit. It's Gabe from the Kids in the Pit podcast. Today I'm joined by Emma Boster from Dying Wish. I met you in Prague on my first trip overseas, and then I saw you the next night in Budapest, and you let me sing a, sing a part of a song on stage. Thanks again for letting me do that. It was so much fun. Those shows were awesome. Yeah, it was. I can't believe you made it all the way out to Europe to see Dying Wish for the first... Well, it wasn't the first time that you saw us, right? So... Or was I, it? I was at a show that you guys were playing, but we didn't know about you guys, and um, we knew about counterparts, so we went there for counterparts, Mm -hmm. but we uh, were kind of late, so we weren't able to catch your set. So yeah, that was the first time I saw you. Very cool. How'd you like What? How did you like Europe? It was awesome. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Prague is my favorite city, probably, in the world. Mm Mm-hmm. Pro- yeah, I, I love Prague too. It was just a really cool atmosphere. Um, I just liked the architecture. I liked the weather. It was just all really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can walk around the city for hours and not get sick of it. It's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, what do you do in Dying sure. Wish? Um, I sing and scream in Dying Wish. Nice. So what year did Dying Wish start and how old were you? Um, We put out our demo in 2018. Um, So I was 23, uh, 22, 23, right about when the demo came out. That's not, the, uh, that's not that long ago. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it's been a busy few years, yeah. Okay, so where did Dying Wish start, and do you all still live there? Um, Dying Wish started in Portland, Oregon, and no, um, I actually just relocated to Nashville about six weeks ago, so I live in Tennessee now, um, and our bass player, John Mackey, lives in Florida. Um, My mom... Uh in Nashville. She lived there for a while. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Have you been? Uh, so I haven't like been to the city, but we've drove, uh, drove through it. So yeah, it's cool. It is a cool city. I am really enjoying it here. There's a lot to do. Not always for, there's stuff to do for kids, but adults especially love Nashville. Cool. So my favorite Dying Wish song is Initiate Thirst. For those not familiar with Dying Wish, what song do you suggest they look up? And do you have a favorite Dying Wish song? Um, I would say if you're going to look up a song, you should look up Torn from Your Silhouette, which is our newest single. And um, my favorite song has yet to be released because, oh my God, sorry, my cat is making so much noise. <laughs> Um, my favorite Dying Wish song is, um, going to be released, but, um, nobody's heard it yet. So you'll hear it by the end of the year for sure. Cool. So are you inspired vocally by any other bands with female singers and screamers? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, Candice from Walls of Jericho. She's been a really big inspiration for me. Um, she's just really tough and um I think that she kind of always kept up and like uh you know probably um how do I phrase this especially back then you know it was like 20 years ago when Walls of Jericho was like getting really big um I think that she probably outperformed a lot of her male peers which I thought was really cool Um, and then I've always loved like Gwen Stefani, no doubt. Um, I grew up on that. 
Um, so she's always been a really big inspiration for me too. And just, she has like a really iconic style that I've always, um, never really felt like I was confident enough to like be that iconic, but I'm trying to embrace a little more of, of that style. Yeah. Um, I interviewed Can uh, Candace. She's really cool. Mm-hmm. I remember, I think your mom and I talked about Candace also. Yeah. So what was the first punk, hardcore, or metal show you attended, and how old were you? Um, it's hard to say because I'd been going to shows since I was like 13, 14, but I would say like the first um, kind of like DIY hardcore show I ever went to was in September or August of 2011. So I would have been 16 or 17, I would have been 16. And um, there was this band called Punch. Um, they haven't been a band for quite a while, but they had women in the band and crew people in the band also. And they played at this bookstore that had no air conditioning. And it was this tiny little room and there was over a hundred people there. And it was just like this sweat dripping from the ceiling, chaos. Um, you know, just kind of like the first time I'd ever been introduced to like an actual punk environment. Um, and I just, it kind of changed my life from, from that moment. That's really cool. Um, do you know the band Paint It Black? Mm-hmm. Um, I recently, so my first like house show, um, it was at like a row home in West Philly. And we saw them, like they announced it the day before it was for, um, I think it was for like charity. Um, mm -hmm. and they built the stage out of like plywood. It it was just an awesome show. Yeah, that's very cool. I didn't know Painted Black was still a band. Yeah, they stopped playing for a while, um, but they're doing some more shows now, which is really cool. Awesome! Very cool. Mm -hmm. So what are some of your favorite bands to see live? Um, Terror, for sure. Never disappoints. Um, one of the, if not the greatest hardcore band of all time, for sure, Terror. Um, some other bands I really enjoy seeing live, Kublacon. You saw them on that Counterparts tour we did in Europe. Yep. And I mean, man, it's always just so energetic chaotic um Knox loose is a really good one um and a band that i haven't seen i actually haven't seen turnstile since like 2017 or 2018 um but that's that's a band that i'm really looking forward to eventually seeing play on the level that they're at now yeah like um i saw that they've been like opening for like blink 182 and crazy stuff like that it's crazy yeah it looks massive I mean just huge arenas um and I don't think that there's a crowd that that band can't win over it's really cool to see mm -hmm. so what is your favorite place you've toured in and what's the most obscure place you've toured in hmm um my favorite place we've toured um I love Western Canada a lot. Um, it's long drives, but um, the drive from Vancouver to Calgary is beautiful. And um, if you have an off day, there is a national park called Banff that is really cool out there. Um, but that's a trip we haven't done since the pandemic, since before. So um, that's a part of the world that I really love. Uh, like we said, we were talking about earlier, I love Prague. Um, and probably the most obscure place to play shows. Um, I don't know. Like, I love, so they have like A markets, which are like LA, um, Chicago, New York. And then there's like a B market, which is like Portland, where I'm from. People don't really go there. And then there's like a C market which is places like um, Saginaw, Michigan. We were on tour with Limp Biscuit, and we played like there and Green Bay, Wisconsin and like all of those places that people don't really tour. 
And I would say that that's probably my favorite kind of area to go to because those people don't really get to experience live music very often. So um, it they're just like a lot more excited to be there than people who tend to, you know, go to a couple shows a week. Um, so we we really love playing those smaller markets and exposing music to people that they probably would have never heard of otherwise. Yeah. Um, I feel like where I'm from, Delaware, would kind of be like a sea market because there's not much here other than like Wilmington mm-hmm. and the beaches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, we haven't played. It's been a, like two and a half years since we played Delaware, actually. Yeah. Um, barely anyone uh, plays Delaware. I've gone to two Delaware shows so far. Mm-hmm. But one of them I didn't really go to because it was 21 plus. But I just stood outside the door. But I did go in and I played guitar with them. Shout out to Keep Flying. Oh, hell yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know you played guitar. Uh, Yeah, I play. Wait, what? Wait, you play guitar and you... don't you play drums also? Or am yeah. I am I making I that up? Bass. Wow. And vocals. Wow, dude. And trombone. But That's I'm, so sick. I'm, I'm not as good at trombone. How to do it. Just learning it so far mm-hmm. so if you were to be in a band and you could only pick one instrument what would you pick probably guitar yeah mm-hmm. what kind of band would you play in I mean me and my friend Jaden are already trying to start a band uh we have like nothing's out yet but we have um five songs but one of them doesn't have lyrics yet and we're gonna try to record a demo or something very cool. Do you have a name? Yeah, Midnight Terror. And we're, um, I'm singing and playing guitar. He's doing drums. And uh, we also have a bassist, but she hasn't, uh, we like recently found her. We just haven't had a bassist for a while, but finally we found one. So. Very cool. Are they all your age too? or? Yeah. Um, so I'm 11. Pretty sure the bassist is 12 and Jaden is 13. So around the same age. That's so that's so cool. Have you heard of that band Hammerhead? They're all brothers. Yeah, I uh I like I saw it on YouTube because it was like blowing up kind of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We played a couple shows with them um in the Kansas City area when we were on tour with uh the Acacia Strain. They do a very good Sepultura cover, but yeah, that's cool. It's oh. cool to see young play, playing music like that. What songs? What songs did they cover? I think it was uh, um, shoot, what's it called? It's the one the Chaos AD uh, uh, uh prop prop uh, resist propaganda. Oh, sorry. Is it Refuse Resist or Propaganda? Wow, I sound stupid right now. I think, I think, I think you're right. I think it's, it's Refuse Resist. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> awesome. I have to love that album. Yeah, great record. Honestly, I love that record. Um, it was the first one I heard by Sepultura, but then I heard Arise, and I think that's got to be my favorite now. Mm-hmm. Um, there's this band called Domain. Uh, I saw them at the Auto Bar. Um and they covered uh, Propaganda by Sepultura. I think that's why I got mixed up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And they let me sing with them. But have you been to the auto bar before? Is that in Philadelphia? No, it's in Baltimore. I don't think I have, no. Well, in the Baltimore scene, it's pretty like famous. And recently, Turnstile did a show there, which is kind of crazy because it's like a 500 cap venue. Mm-hmm. Um wow. Yeah. Um it's not sorry, yeah. go ahead. It's like um a little club and instead of playing on stage, domain played on the floor, which is cool because that was my uh first floor show. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, no. That wasn't my first. My dad's band Thought Control in uh New Jersey. That was the first floor show. I think that was second. So, um, yeah, I love a good floor show. Mm-hmm. They're fun. 
So mm -hmm. do you have any crazy tour stories you want to share? Oh, man. Yes. Um, let's see. Well, so I would say it was our one of our first tours that we really ever did. Um, it was in the summer of 2019. We were driving from Portland to Florida, which is about as far as you can get <laughs> from yeah. one point in the U.S. to the other. And uh, we originally had a... Um, van that we were renting from someone and a trailer that we were renting from someone. And it was going to be the first time we'd ever done a, a, like a trailer tour ever. Sorry, my cat's going nuts. Um, so, you know, we were going to be able to carry all of our merch and just have more space to sleep and not have to get to hotels or whatever. And, um, probably about six hours into the drive in Caldwell, Idaho, our transmission goes out and we have to pull over on the side of a um, an off ramp on an exit. We look at the transmission. We're like, oh, maybe it just needs more fluid. Let's like give it a while, try it again. Um, and we went to go start the van and put it in drive and it like started to jackknife. So half of our van was in the road and half of it wasn't like off the side of the highway. Um, and so then we had to like call AAA. This guy came and picked us up. He had told us been struck by lightning twice and he died and came back to life and had all these crazy stories um, to tell us. And then we end up having to ditch our van and get a grand caravan, which is essentially a minivan. And we put all of our gear, except for like our cabs had to stay behind and our drum kit had to stay behind as much merch as we can all of our personal stuff and six people into a minivan and drove all the way to Florida. And then we did an entire tour like that all the way back to Idaho when we picked up our van three weeks later. And it was definitely, if that didn't break us, I knew that we were going to be okay, but it was definitely rough. Um, especially in, you know, August, like the worst time of the year. Um, like all of us crammed in that van people sleeping in the trunk um that was definitely a pretty pivotal moment for dying wish being like all right so you know if we're gonna do it this is how you know we're always gonna have to be prepared for something like this and so um it never gets easier but it always you know you just kind of learn to roll with the punches I guess yeah that sucks that um you lost all the cabs in the drum set but yeah yeah we got it back eventually. Luckily, our um, drummer's girlfriend, she lived in Idaho at the time. So we actually were able to put stuff in her garage. But um, if it weren't for that, we would have been in a much worse situation. Yeah. Um, so what is your favorite type of food from another country? Hmm. Um, so I love Indian food. And um they have this thing, a good friend of mine, Ravi, he lives in Vancouver. One time after we played a show out there, he took us to this Indian restaurant and he, I had never had dosa before. So we all ordered do dosa and essentially it is a really thin style Indian crepe that is literally like this long and about this wide, it's like a giant, giant, tiny little pancake. And then they put all of these different, um, like Cora and potatoes in the middle. And then you just like fold up the pancake and then like rip it and dip it in sauce and eat it. And that has to be probably my favorite meal of all time is a dosa. So you mean like it's super wide, but it's super short? Yeah, like it's so, I mean, it's it's gotta be like, so so thin so they roll it um I have a hilarious photo of me we order dosa to go and it they roll it up and it literally looks like a baguette like this but it's all rolled up and then you like dump all of the stuff that they give you in the middle and then you fold it up um I'll have to send you a picture of it but it's delicious um if you ever, if you ever want to try it, I, I don't know if you like Indian food, but it's really good. I love Indian food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like a samosa, but you kind of, 
you kind of take all of the samosa filling and then you wrap it up yourself. Oh. If that makes sense. Yeah, I've heard mm-hmm. of samosa, but I've never tried it. Oh, you got it. They're the best. Okay. So what was your favorite TV show and movie when you were my age? Hmm. My favorite TV show and movie. Um, well, I've always, always, always loved The Lion King. Obsessed um, ever since I was little. And then I went and saw it on um, like the play, the Broadway play, and that was really cool. Um, but when I was 11, I loved Drake and Josh. Have you ever seen that show? Heard of it, but. Uh, oh, it's. It's it's really funny. Um, I and my little sister was young. She's she's ten years younger than me, so just about. So I had to watch a lot of like little kid shows all the time too. Um, but yeah, I loved like iCarly was really funny and Drake and Josh. Those are my two favorites. Nice. So would you rather fight a hundred duck sized horses or one horse sized duck? I've been thinking about this so much. Um, I think a hundred duck-sized horses because I'm actually terrified of birds. So I think that one horse-sized duck, I think that would actually just like terrify me to the point where I wouldn't be able to fight back. But a hundred duck-sized horses, I think all I would have to do is find higher ground, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I would also choose like a duck. Why? And also, but a horse can't. Yeah, and also like ducks are kind of mean. So imagine a giant duck; it could just decapitate you. Exactly. They they are mean for sure. And well, and horses are nicer. But I mean, if you had to fight them, I don't know. Yeah, but you can just try yeah. to boosh one and then run and then boosh one and then run and then boosh one then run. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're fast, but I think I think I got a better chance with the hundred horses and the size of a duck. <laughs> yep. So would you rather travel to the future or the past for one day, uh, if you have no chance of dying or mess messing anything up? Um I think I would rather go to the future just because um I'm really curious if we're ever going to do anything about the climate crisis. Um, And I feel like the future is more important than the past. So that's, I would definitely go to the future. Nice answer. So if you could tell your 11, if you could tell your 11 year old self anything at all, what would you tell him? For her. Oh, well, yeah, her. Uh, Oh, that's okay. Um, I would tell her that um, the only thing that will ever get in the way of you succeeding is yourself. Nice. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, anything to add before we wrap it up? Um. Well, I don't really have a lot to that we can talk about at the moment, but we're going to play Sound and Fury next month which I'm very excited for. Um, And then we have more things coming at the end of the year. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, And just thank you so much for having me on. And um, I'm really excited to see what you're doing with the pod and, um, you know, with your exposure of youth and music. I think that, you know, I've always been a big fan of um, all access, meaning all ages shows and accessibility at shows means that, you know, we should, make sure that we have kids involved too. So I think that's awesome. Yeah. Well, um, thanks to Emma for joining me today. And thanks to all of you for watching or listening. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Spotify and other streaming platforms until next week. Bye. Bye.